The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. Good morning, Cowboys Nation, and welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, right here in the SWBC studio. I'm Nicole Hutchison, alongside Aisha Morrison, Jess Navarez, and Christy Scales. Ladies, how y'all feeling this morning? Good. Good. Good, yeah. Okay, Christy, with who's, the who's in this week? Who are we going to get to talk to hey. tomorrow, Aisha? Who? The kids. <laughs> yeah, what do you call them? The Nuggets. The nuggets. Love it. <laughs> the Nuggets. nugget the, week. The Rookets. No. <laughs> the Rookets? The Rookies. I'm, I, I said Rookets. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I was going to let you. I was hoping okay. you were going to let me. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. We also yeah. had someone take a visit yesterday. Yeah. 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 Say Jones. Hmm. It was what released do you by the Jacksonville say? Jacks. That's so crazy. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Walking right into those early <laughs> today. Jesus. I stayed quiet just to wait for the moment. I look. I was building it up. <laughs> no, but uh, Jacksonville Jaguars released him last Monday. So, uh, what's y'all's first initial initial thoughts on the possibility of this opportunity for the Cowboys to bring in someone that has experience? Obviously, um, I'll start with Christy. It makes me feel ancient mm. because I remember Gosh. when we drafted his dad in the first yep. year. I was I was what in my second year covering the 92? Cowboys. Mm. Yeah, 1992. We had two first round picks that year. Kevin Smith, mm-hmm. the cornerback from A and M, saw Kevin last week. And awesome. uh, Kevin, thanks for tuning in and watching the show uh, at times. So hi to Kevin. And then the other uh, pick was Robert Jones and played middle linebacker mm-hmm. for the Cowboys. Um, Very fine career. He was here four years and won three Super Bowls Mm. in four years and a very underrated member of that team. So when you say Zay, I think of his dad. Dad. (laughs) But uh, but no, I think that um, uh, we don't know like any numbers that they're talking and the like, but could be, I think it would be a very attractive addition, free Mm. agent. And I just remember two years ago, uh, three touchdowns against the the Cowboys yeah. when we uh, when we were there in Jacksonville. Yeah. So we remember. Yes, it, it was a we very know. positive impression that remains <laughs> in my mind. Well, uh, for me, I think if you can get a veteran guy that comes in, because really your wide receiver three spot is a little murky now without mm-hmm. MG, and it's up for competition, and it's not a bad idea to bring somebody in with experience that has playoff experience specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that really worries me is he's coming off of uh, a knee injury mm-hmm. from last mm-hmm. season. So, uh, of course, you know the faith we have in the medical staff here with the Cowboys. And, uh, you know, if they do decide to go this way, they're going to have to clear him and and do all of that. But I will say, I think if you can get a veteran guy in here to take that wide receiver three Mm -hmm. spot or at least try to compete for it, it does make your younger guys, say uh, a Kevontae Turpin, uh, a Jalen Brooks, kind of step up and and step into that Mm -hmm. role. uh, to uh, Jalen Tolbert, exactly. uh, To come in and, and compete and really really have to show their best come training camp uh, to take that wide receiver three spot. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, this this season is – I don't know how you guys feel about this season. I mean, after the draft and stuff, I said to myself, they're going to be good, ain't they? Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, the Jaguars took Brian Thomas Jr., uh, wide receiver, out of – where were you at? Why am I forgetting <laughs> so quickly like that? Anyway, they, they drafted him, and I think that plays a role in at of LSU. Mm-hmm. And I think that plays a role in why they decided to let go of Zay. You mentioned the knee injury. Um, but also, too, they picked up Gabe Davis last year from the Bills, and mm-hmm. a lot of what they do is the same. I mean, when you talk about the loss of Michael Gallup, you think about the deep threat, you mm-hmm. think about some of the route running. I think that um, – I think that uh, Zay is a little bit more refined in his route running just a tad bit more, but still able to work the boundary, still able to be a deep threat and um, making big catches along the sideline is something that Zay can do very well. Um, The Jags are in a – I don't know what they got going on over there, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it it makes sense that they would let him go after getting Brian Thomas Jr. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he still has a meeting with the Chiefs Chiefs today. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't like that they didn't 
get something done. But you know what? Like we'll just see and see how it plays out. And if not, we're just gonna roll roll with the young guys, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, and it might yeah. not be up to him or up to the Cowboys that something didn't get done. Yeah, he might yeah. just want to. He might be shopping around options. and see your you best need, option. Need to, yeah. Look, if the reigning Super Bowl champions asked you to go I'm do a workout or go either. go check it out, yeah, I'm not say gonna no. pass it up either because yeah. they have a obviously they have a good culture there mm-hmm. as well. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, I can be a part of something good and. The Chiefs are also too. I think they might have drafted a receiver, but they obviously, yeah. yeah, They so, but they also are in a place too with some of the things going on with Rasheed Rice Mm -hmm. and something like Uh that. They might be looking to kind of replace that type of presence on the field their way as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I think there's going to be could be some really interesting uh, maneuvering at the wide position, wide receiver position overall Mm -hmm. for uh, the Cowboys because we're thinking, oh, we need to add somebody, and Mm -hmm. you know, how you replace Michael Gallup? Do you count on the younger guys moving up? Um, so I think we, we see that position as, okay, we, we need to add to that. Yeah. But y'all know that I always kind of go back to the numbers and the mm-hmm. finances because there's a yeah. budget that you have to work within and, and your personnel, your a resident limited. Finance, yeah. Well, no, it, it, it's, it's just the reality yeah. Yeah. of what you have to work with. And you can't just, oh, you yeah. know, be like Bill Parcells. There's not a $1,800 <laughs> quarterback and you bring in whoever you want. You have to work within parameters. And so, um. I, I think that a lot of people would be surprised. I was surprised to learn yeah. that when it comes to position spending, mm-hmm. the Dallas Cowboys, how, what is right now on the salary cap for wide receiver position? Would mm. you like to guess um, where it ranks in the NFL? No, I goodness. mean, we're looking to add. It's so. probably low, right? Because they, mm. I mean, besides Brandon Cooks, CD C- Lamb's C- on, C- yeah. on the books yeah. for just under $18 million. Yeah. It is third highest. It oh, is wow. third wow. highest in the NFL. It's over $50 million. So, um, because uh, Cooks is ten million, mm-hmm. uh, CD. That's that's why when I say there's going to be some more maneuvering within this, yeah. uh, you know, Michael Gallup, thirteen point eight million. Mm-hmm. You know, with and with him. Doesn't being that gone. change so, though? Well, that's what's saying. Things are going to change as, as yeah. you move along here. But but when you're saying, well, we'll get Z- uh, Zay Jones, you know, at a at a good rate, and we'll get, well, yeah. But I think he was going to take Jones about ten take, million. Yeah, I was going to say ten million though, of so the Jacksonville salary we, cap in twenty twenty four. Is it going to take a pay well, cut? That, that's the thing, though. It's that's bringing him them. on. You're already at this mm-hmm. amount, so that's why some people say, "Oh, this guy is is shopping around, and and this isn't bargain basement, honey." Yeah. Mm-hmm. But think about these parameters, and I was just really surprised to see that. And that's why I think we always go back to <clears throat> Dak Prescott getting his yeah. uh, contract done. But the CD Lamb, if you can get that extension right. uh, before yeah. this season then uh, before the regular season gets going, then that $18 million is 17.9, but I'm going to round up $18 million. You get him that big Mm -hmm. guarantee and the big bonus that cuts the uh, base salary. And so, um, you know, can lessen that cap hit for this season. But I just wonder what the Cowboys will or how they'll kind of maneuver that because it goes along with them releasing Martavis Bryant yesterday as well. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, are they really doing what they need to do to kind of make that happen? I don't know. Yeah, Uh, yeah. And so, you know, Martavis was a minimum. And and I don't believe, I'm not sure that his was one of the top 51 um, in the offseason when you have 90 players. Not all 90 count against the salary cap. That would be impossible. And so um, in the offseason, they count the top 51. And so, but once the season gets going mm-hmm. and you've had your roster reductions, then, but you do have to account for practice squad players. Yeah. So that $240,000 <coughs> a year, roughly, yeah. let's just say quarter million dollars a year for a practice squad player, that has to be budgeted in, mm-hmm. right? And then you also have to leave some wiggle room because you know you're going to have some injuries and those guys still yeah. get paid and you're going to have to bring some guys on or leave some wiggle room so you can make some trades. But, um, yeah, that when I when I saw that that so much is is committed to wide receiver, I thought, man, that's even more impetus yeah. to yeah. get CD done because that's a lot to a position. Right? Well, do you think they would bring him in if they didn't maybe think they would be? Listen, I mean, they I understand like what you're saying is valid, but they spent like a couple quarters in free agency. Like, if yeah, you ain't got oh, you Jack, can definitely, yeah. you you can definitely afford him. Right, but yeah. but when I say I think that it's overall maneuvering, mm-hmm. not just Zay, oh, I understand but that. in terms of yeah. you know getting the thing done with uh, with CD. Well, they need right? to hurt. They need to hurt that yeah. part. 
that part. If you're <laughs> listening to us now, make sure to give us a call at one 855 2297 We're taking questions, calls, you name it, we got it. Uh a one eight 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 one eight five five two two nine seven. One eight 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 five five two two nine seven. I have to me- go ahead and re- repeat that three times. Sounds like we're sure. on an infomercial. The, <laughs> get your QVC self out of here. I know. <laughs> Y'all are sick. No, I look sick. Uh no, but this um this move possible move with bringing in zay jones here for the cowboys um who does that kind of ruffle the feathers for or put put on kind of an alert when you're talking about the depth within this running back room you've got a wide receiver room you've got like jalen tober like you mentioned Cavante turpin does this kind of uh make them a little concerned or who i would say jalen tober more than anybody it's just but but the thing is and and this is the thing about jalen tober that i realized last year Dak and CD were so good. Yeah. And I think when you go watch the film and you watch, like, when you watch these plays develop, Mm -hmm. Jalen is open. (laughs) He's open a lot on film. But it's hard to justify coming off of year one Mm -hmm. when year one is open. I mean, CD had a phenomenal year. Yeah. So I think it's difficult to justify just going through all of your reads in that way when you see the open man and then we talked about the west coast what is the west coast it's it's who's yeah. who's open right now mm-hmm. and so i think that jalen tolbert suffered a little bit because of that because when you look at his development he was reliable last year yeah. he had yeah. some uh key catches and big moments where you needed him and even jalen brooks they used him towards the end of the year when you needed a guy so i'm like with Jalen Tolbert, I don't think his dev- development's been stifled or anything. I think that he's becoming kind of what we thought he would be. Mm-hmm. But bringing in this veteran to me is more so. For me, I think it's more so addressing the Michael Gallup loss. Mm-hmm. But then also, too, um, with Kevontae Turpin, I believe Kevontae Turpin's going to have opportunities to return this year. Yeah. And they might mm-hmm. want him to focus more so on that. Yeah. at this point and let him and allow him to be involved in that i think you do fine will be involved in that more mm-hmm. so that's that might be part of the reason as well is and and, and also to shoot you you might just need to if you can't stop the run you might just need to pass the ball yeah <laughs> that's, sorry that's a little weird but yeah, they, i okay. think they were an aerial attack last year mm-hmm. i think they want to get back to running the ball but i think they kind of want to balance it so for me i i, I think it would be a good move and but to your answer your question i yeah. think it puts more pressure on Jalen Tober for competition. Got you. Right. No one anything. Well, we got a we first got a caller. We actually have two callers. Uh, oh. We're going to take Mike first out of California. Mike, what do you got for us? What's going on, ladies? Good morning. And uh, Good uh, morning. thank you for having Good me morning. on. Hey, Miss uh, Aisha Morrison, I would like to just give you a huge shout out, man. I love the work you guys do with that draft show, thank as you. well as the rest of you ladies. Shout out to all you, all you ladies, man. You guys do a great job. But um, um, I really enjoy that draft coverage. But I, I just want to say, um, I don't know if this Zay Jones thing, how it's going to go or whatever, but I just kind of feel like he's a progress stopper to Jalen Tolbert. Yeah. But, like, I, I had called a few weeks ago, and I told you guys that they, they mm-hmm. need to stop playing games with the CD Lamb contract, you know, that he could be the best 88. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I stand by that, you know. they, they I, I hope they can get it done. And uh, I just want to say that despite the lack of, of, you know, moves in free agency and all, I'm really excited about the depth of this team, and I don't think a, a lot of people realize that all these years of drafting well and everything, I think that, that our depth is great, and, and I'm excited to see all this young talent that, that's up and coming, and a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, yet, but I think that they're going to show up and show out, and I think regardless of all the free agency, lack, lack of free agency moves, I still think that we're a 10-win team. But I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I'll hang up there. And once again, thank you for having me on. God bless you all. And shout out to the whole Cowboys Nation. Let's go. Let's thank go. Mike, you're so on, positive. Yeah. Right? Thanks, oh, my yeah. energy. Yeah. No, that, that, that's, that's a, that's a I want um, to be as awake as Mike. Come on, exactly. energy. <laughs> and the he's in California. Yes. It's two hours earlier. I know. So. Look at you. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what do you think of, J- yeah. of um, Zay possibly being a progress stopper for Jalen well, or other young people? Here's uh, wide receivers. Here's Go what I it. was going to say, too, because I think something that ties into this a lot is mm-hmm. the development of the tight ends mm-hmm. because they were not as part of the aerial attack as they should have been. Jake Ferguson aside, yes, yeah. you know that's your tight end one, but Mike McCarthy's a tight end kind of guy. He's right. the kind of coach, uh, kind of play caller that's going to want to get those tight ends more involved in the receiving game as well. Um, so I don't necessarily think it stops progress from a guy like Jalen Tolbert, but I do think 
there's enough of the, and Cowboys Nation's going to hate this analogy, but the pie to go around mm -hmm. when it comes to the passing game because you're not even just talking about your wide receiver group. Your tight end group needs to get more involved in that as well, and I think that's something that severely lacked uh, last season was getting those tight ends involved in, in the screen game, the passing mm -hmm. game, and mm -hmm. um, I, I think the development of them also will, will kind of impact any opportunity for the Whoa, hello. All right. Any so, opportunity yeah, for the go. wide receivers as well. There you go. <laughs> I love that. I, I think in a way it does kind of stop the progress of Jalen, but it also doesn't because at the end of the day, like you're going to get it if you want to get it. If you want to improve, you want to improve, right? I think that he's been doing what he needs to do this offseason because he's mentioned it, right? Even training with Brandon Cooks this offseason, um, he's been doing what he needs to do in order to improve and take this next jump this year because he knows what's at stake. So I don't think it necessarily stops the progress. I think that it'll just add the competition level or yes. enhance the yes. competition exactly. level. Yes. I don't think it'll stop his progress, though. No, I wonder if it plays a role also, too, is, like, again, you have a lot of coaches on this staff that are – here for a year mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. might want somebody that is yeah. a little more experienced a little bit more yeah. you know but also too we've seen this season like just like we talk about throughout you know the defensive line and mm -hmm. offensive line in depth and stuff like that injuries happen things happen nicks yeah. nicks and bruises happen and this is a 17 game season you're, you're also just making sure there's there's depth on the team so I think that he mentioned the depth on the team in general so I'm excited I mean I do I do agree with him that there are areas that there's more depth than what no, for sure I, that for we sure. were ex thinking at first I do mm. want to say real quick to your point Nicole mm -hmm. about Jalen Tolbert you know whether he wants to do it or not yeah I will give Jalen Tolbert the credit that he deserves mm -hmm. in being a student and and just absolutely diving into mm -hmm. learning and and trying to be better from his first well, year. You know yeah. So it's just <laughs> if you want a football IQ, mm -hmm. Jalen Tolbert's your guy. I yeah. mean, and and unfortunately, I don't think you've gotten to see that a lot. But mm -hmm. I do expect that he's not he's gonna he's not gonna shy away from the challenge, no yeah. matter who's who he's going against. We've got another caller. We have Robert out of Rio Grande Valley. Valley, who today is today. <laughs> Hi, Sorry. Robert. Hi, Robert. How are you? <laughs> it's Bob. It's uh, but I'll answer to Robert. Hi, Bob. It's a it's a pleasure to talk to you, ladies. I do enjoy your show so much. Thank you. Thank you, you give a you come at at it with a different perspective than the men do on their programs, and uh, you you guys show a lot of wisdom and insight and. Uh, kudos to the last caller and his remarks about Asia oh, and the you. job that she did yeah. with the with the draft. Uh, young lady, you are totally right on. It, uh, when you analyze a player, it uh, and when you finally come up with where you're going to place him, you put him in the right spot, and I do enjoy that. Okay. I uh, uh, I look forward to you guys coming on. Quite frankly, I was a little slow uh, uh, getting to you guys. It, uh, I would watch the men's guys out of habit, you know. And uh, but when I finally tuned into you guys, I said, "Whoa, boy, you've been short yourself." <laughs> you love an honest you're king. Sweet. <laughs> you're sweet. Love Bob. a self-aware king. So Thank nice. You. That was yeah. very nice. And Rio Grande Valley. I mean, that is uh, Cowboys Nation to the RG, core, is man. It? So absolutely, yeah, it, it, yeah, absolutely. So we appreciate. <laughs> You and everyone there, there in Rio Grande Valley. Yep. Yep. Every one of these Hispanic people down here have got a Cowboys jersey. And, uh, and some of them uh, with numbers of all the way back to Marion Barber. Oh. It, uh, I mean, oh, they're, they're uh, died in the wool fans, that, uh, and they live and die with the boys. Thank you so much for taking my call. Of I'm going to let get off here and let somebody else get on, but I, I definitely enjoy you, and I'll be listening to you in the future. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Bob, I'm glad that you mentioned Marion Barber because a couple weeks ago we got a call from Fernando in Miami, and he asked me a question um, about uh, Julius Jones and Marion Barber mm -hmm. and what happened with that uh, playoff loss to the Giants yeah. back in 2007. Um and so uh, it was one where uh, Fernando said, why was Julius Jones benched? And if we could have run the ball more in that game, mm -hmm. we, you know, that's the game, the Cabo game, right, <laughs> where the Cowboys were heavy favorites and number one <sighs> seed and lost to the Giants. Yeah. And so I, I promised Fernando Trauma. that I would go back and look at my notes. And um, that was uh, Julius's uh, 
uh, Julius started every game that regular season, but that playoff game, the Cowboys had had a bye, mm-hmm. and Wade Phillips, I was right about the fact that he was going with the hot hand. That whole year, Marion Barber, that's when he became known as Marion the Barbarian, and he had a lot more carries than Julius Jones throughout the entire season. And so, uh, even though Julius was uh, the starter. Mm. So officially it was not a benching. And I also looked in my notes and it was not anything injury related. Mm -hmm. But Julius did have only three carries in that playoff game and Marion had like 25 and uh, they ran for like 130 yards but didn't get the win. But I wanted to go back and respond to Fernando and follow up on the question that he had before. And thank you, Bob, for mentioning mentioning Marion because it it led into going back to Fernando's call. Yeah, and thank you for reminding us that Aisha is dope. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. You know, no, you know, you do an amazing job for the draft show. So really. Thank you, ladies. You know what? Appreciate it. Who was out of all the picks, (laughs) out of the eight people that were added, who do you think is gonna have Wait Christy Day, that was our second segment. Well, look, and we we'll, can tease. And we'll go to it right after this break. You're watching, you're girls, watching girls Talk, boys, boys Talk. Oh, my God. Presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. <laughs> we know that juicy, cheesy, grilled to perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby. The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Twenty-four PBR World Finals are taking over at t Stadium. It all starts on May 17th with Kid Rock's Rockin' Rodeo. Then on May 18th and 19th, the finalists compete in the 2024 PBR Championship. Let's rock and ride. Three-day tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of at t Stadium. Mm. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. How, how, how does that translate to Spanish? <laughs> Yeehaw. Oh, there we go. All right. Wow. Yeehaw. I don't have a little segue. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeehaw. Sorry, my bad, y'all. We just been to talk about these rookies. All right, it's rookie mini camp Yeehaw. starting officially tomorrow <laughs> on Friday, and Saturday. I know they start walkthrough practices yeah. on um, Friday, and then they have a full practice on Saturday. Oh, I'm ecstatic! Excited? Yeah. I'm just excited to just get my eyes on the prize, yeah. the Nuggets. Typically, last, well, I know you all obviously have been here covering the team. Um, what, what is the most exciting part about, you know, seeing these guys come in on these, you know, in mm. for rookie mini camp? Oh, What's my it? my favorite part yeah. of last year, because it was the first yeah. time we got to experience it, I, Aisha and I, was mm-hmm. I love seeing them grow through the year. So you meet them at first, and yeah. they're so nervous, like sweating. I remember Junior Fihoko was literally sweating, yeah. uh, talking to media for the first time, introducing, you know, himself. And then you see them grow as people, as players throughout the the course of the season. So it's funny now to compare, you know, kind of the, the person you first meet, mm-hmm. which is a nervous rookie, was like who the heck is all all of this media around me especially if they come from a smaller school that that doesn't get a lot of media coverage it is nerve-wracking it is a lot and to kind of see them come into their own and become their own person as a Dallas Cowboy it's it's absolutely phenomenal and uh, I'm excited to see that because uh, I, I think for me last year a guy that I, I saw a lot of growth in his, you know, off the field, and hopefully we see more on, is Luke Schoonmaker. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed talking to him throughout the course of last year and yeah. uh, seeing how nervous he kind of was at first, like very hesitant with like, what is going on uh, with all this media coverage and all of that? But then as it's gone on, like his football IQ has just grown so much. His mind has grown. And I think a lot, a large part of that is how how well that tight end room really just like adapted to him and, and welcomed him in. So I'm excited to see 
um, kind of that first step in these rookies taking their own step to become their own version of a Dallas Cowboy. Mm. Yeah, on the field, uh, mentioned like walkthrough and then more of a real practice. But let's be honest, it's not much more than underwear Olympics because right. <laughs> right. You're just, it's not real football. Yeah. But what you're looking at from a media standpoint in watching practice is guys are drafted at one position or they played a particular spot in college. Are they at that position or are they already putting are the coaches here mm -hmm. already putting them in different spots? So yeah. you're taking mental notes like that uh how do you think that they're going to be used uh for example um you know guard to center uh which you know uh bb mm -hmm. you know expecting things like that so you're watching things like that honestly you're just trying to like memorize numbers yeah. you're kind of seeing the body type so that you can you know just real quick learn who mm -hmm. people are just yeah. looking very quickly from the sideline uh and then yes how they handle themselves uh in the locker room and also you're thinking oh, this guy's a good talker, so he's going to yeah. be a good source this year. And it's also just introducing yourself and kind of, you know, just yeah. a little bit of relationship so that uh, you can hopefully go back to that well in training camp and during the season. And it may not be a formal interview that you're using uh, sound bites for that I'm going to use on Cowboys radio reports, but just getting some little mm -hmm. nuggets from, yeah. you know, some information yeah. that you can drop into the broadcast or on the, onto yeah. the podcast. What about you? Well, I mean, they said I mean, most yeah. they missed said most of the things, yeah. but for me, um, as someone that is really into the film and really into, yeah. you know, seeing these kids, I've watched extensive tape on most of them. So for me, it's just I know that it is the underwear Olympics, but <laughs> I you can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You 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 get a feel. I know I do. I get a feel for how confident this player is. Yeah. Um, how much they already might be in the playbook if they have it. You mm -hmm. you also you can just see Sometimes guys stand out. In just the two days? Sometimes guys stand out yeah. Yeah. right away. For sure. Yeah. Mm. And you can just feel it. Like, it's it's a presence. It's an aura that some of these gentlemen have. And to your point, Jess, sometimes they, they develop a bit more over season. Like, mm -hmm. we might look up yeah. in training camp and be like, dang, like, he's just. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes on that very first day, you meet him, shake their hand, look him in the mm -hmm. eye. You're like, okay, this kid. Yeah. This kid has something. And so I that's what I'm excited about. And also, too, to you ladies' point is just getting to know some of the players a yeah. little bit more. Um, I think it's important to be empathetic uh, to what this process is mm -hmm. like for these young players. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about all of it. I mean, just watch. I mean, I've been watching them on the yeah. screen for months now, especially Cooper Beebe, y'all. I made a rookie mistake last year on the draft show. I didn't know he returned to college. So I was like talking about him and everything. And everybody was like, he went back to school. <laughs> and that's literally like not a fun thing to experience on a draft show. But I've been and very infatuated with this player and his ability since last year to just like see him yeah. and to, mm -hmm. he's another Yogi Bear. I'm so Aww. excited. He is another I'm Yogi I'm so Bear. excited. Is that a player that you're most excited about? Um, I, I am. I'm excited about him, but I, I also too, I'm really I am looking forward to Tyler Guyton as well mm -hmm. because he yeah. both of those gentlemen are going to be important to not only this year but I believe that this is their the future of your offensive line. Yeah. And so to seeing how they they transition is going to be important but I'm it's hard because I think Maurice is a, like is somebody yeah. as well a linebacker out of um Notre Dame is going to be important to what they do as well. Yeah. So it's this class in general this class in general Intriguing. got me hype. I think this is yeah. – I thought they drafted really – I thought they drafted well. I thought this was well and well-executed draft. Yeah. And, Nicole, the one thing I would say, because I know this will be the first time that you get to see yeah. how the coaches interact at the rookie um, camp, mm -hmm. this is such a crucial time, yeah. not just for that coach-rookie relationship – but this is really the only time that these rookies are going to have the coaches to themselves. And when yeah. you say working on the fundamentals, I mean just the fundamentals. Really what the staff is trying to do is acclimate these young guys to what to expect in the practices mm -hmm. yes. as well as that. And so because once we're done with this, then it's Jump OTAs. Right mm -hmm. You're not getting that one-on-one -on -one attention as much practice. because yeah. it has to be spread. Yeah. And so that I'm, I'm – want to share that because this is from the coach's perspective and these young guys you have to take advantage of this opportunity mm -hmm. because once it's done with the rookies and you're alongside the veterans they cannot slow down the train yeah yeah the train yeah. is going 
and you've got to keep pace and you're going to you're going to be swimming in it and you're going to feel like you're getting dragged down by the undertow so um take sink advantage of it exactly mm-hmm. sink or swim but this is this is the really the only time in the off season that for the true on field work yeah. in what is more of a practice like setting yeah. that the rookies will be with their position coaches oh, wow. yeah I kind of want to go back to you and Christy, though. Uh, is there a player that you're looking forward to most seeing? I mean, jumping back to kind of what Aisha said, I'm I'm really excited about Cooper yeah. Beebe. And, and that's because I talked a lot about last season how much respect I, I really have gained for that center yeah. position uh, because of Tyler Biotish. It's just – it's a mindset that mm-hmm. is so interesting to me and just every little – Thing you have to know and pay attention to and focus on as a center because really every play starts with you yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's people seem to think it starts with the quarterback nope it starts mm-hmm. with the center and then it trickles down from there so to me I'm excited to see you know how confident he comes in and, and I just feel like he's going to be one of those guys that Aisha's talking about that you just see and you're like Man, he's ready. Yeah. He's, he, he's ready to be here. He's going to step in. But uh, I, I want to kind of see him take that Yogi Bear role, as, as we call it. That, <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the point of that last year with Tyler Biotish was, you know, off the field, he, he's doing all of this yoga and, and yeah. doing everything to take care of his body. And uh, he, you talk to him, and he's so smart, and he's, so, he's kind of gentle off the field when you're talking to him in the locker room. You get his tail on that field. He's not letting anybody touch yeah. Dak Prescott. Like he is a vicious, ferocious bear. So that's where the whole Yogi Bear thing came from last year. Was just the mind switch that that these centers have of and most of these players, in fact. Mm. But um, I'm just so intrigued to see kind of how how he acclimates. But um, I mean, man, this uh, you said it. This whole draft class. Mm. There's yeah. just something something about this class as a whole yeah. that is special. Like, they each bring something that this team needed, mm-hmm. um, whether it be depth, whether it be, you know, whatever. But I'm, I'm excited to meet all of them. Mm-hmm. Well, when you say something that they needed, I'm, I'm going to go a different direction yeah. and go second round with Neyland mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. he can <laughs> make such yeah. a – even if he's not a starter – Man, he can be an immediate part of the rotation mm-hmm. as a pass rusher. Yeah. So we've too. talked about Dorrance Armstrong yeah. and and Fowler leaving, yeah. and so there is a hole. And there, if if Nealon and the, you know they talk about how good he's going to be, you know, against the run as well, you know. So, um, yeah. but need it, it. It, as part of that uh, possible pass rush <laughs> rotation, Nealon yeah. need him. So Ooh. you're right. No, I'm, oh no, that's Ooh. no, Come that's on, Jess. Chrissy? No, it's just repeating off of Jess's. No, no, she's but, putting it on me. That was all her. But but, but th- this is a guy who you know because we talk about um, BB and Guyton, and yes, I mean. Can, <laughs> Could, meaty, be, meaty. could be walking and mm-hmm. starters and stuff, but I, I think uh, Neyland could get a lot of playing mm-hmm. time. Talk about That's it. Good. I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to go sixth round with Ryan Flournoy only because – Okay. I, I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. No, uh, I, I want to see how, you know, a guy who comes from a school that doesn't get a lot of, you know, media coverage, Southeast Missouri State, I believe that was uh, the school he played at. So um, I want to see how he comes in and, and just elevates his game and brings that confidence. Um, and on the film, I kind of took some notes, six two running a 4-4 is crazy one athleticism <laughs> is crazy his athleticism is crazy um and one thing that he has gotten a lot of praise for is how reliable his hands are that's something yes. that michael gallup mm-hmm. um uh, had a great asset to earlier in his career i know obviously he battled some injuries the last few but um that's something that obviously the cowboys are looking for um and just looking at the numbers his best uh, he dropped just 3.2 percent of catchable passes thrown his way since 2022 yes incredible 3.2 um so i'm looking forward to seeing what he brings and how he kind of stands out aisha mentioned how um you know how these guys stand out some of them stand out more than others um so i'm looking forward to him i also well i wanted to point out too like with the loss of martavius bryant who was a big body wide receiver Mm -hmm. He's going to be very important, mm-hmm. especially when you're talking about practice reps of going against these bigger body yeah. receivers, because that was a big part of what Martavius, I think, mm-hmm. brought that just was very, very underrated. And Aisha pointed that out last year. So um, one thing I wrote down about him is uh, he's 6'1", 202 pounds. That's a big guy for a receiver. So to me, uh, I noticed when I was watching his film, confident pass catcher, strength in route yeah. running, mm-hmm. slants and shallow crossers. And I 
put a little yep. star and a smiley face because I said I should like that in my notes. Yes, so, yeah. I, I'm so glad that you mentioned that he was reliable. <laughs> I knew, well, I knew she'd like that. <laughs> Talk football to me. You know, it makes me happy inside. Yeah. Um, no, the, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that he yeah. was reliable. That's the last thing I said about yeah. him is that he's very yeah. QB friendly and he's reliable. And what stands out with him also, too, is the effort because mm. not only is he his hand are his hands strong and he has the route running and things like that he's also a very physical blocker yeah. very willing blocker yeah. on the outside and it, even if the ball's not coming his way he, mm. he might chip you a little bit and let you know like hey it's, I'm, mm. I'm not just here for decoration um the run after catch ability yeah. is is great with him as well he's he, to your point he is a guy that is gonna push the envelope yeah um in that room and i just can't believe we went from being like very unsure kind of about mm -hmm. the depth at the wide receiver position to starting to be like okay well this guy has some potential this yeah. guy has yeah. some potential we're just looking for mm -hmm it to materialize yeah. you know during camp and stuff like that well and you just never know what mm -hmm. can happen come training camp yeah. I, I mean a lot of these guys could come up mm -hmm. and have a fantastic camp yeah you never know and especially with how competitive this wide receiver group is about to be mm -hmm. look don't count anybody out and he's a guy that yeah i agree yeah don't i'm kind of I'm, I'm looking forward to what Jalen tolbert brings but i don't know ryan flournoy is gonna bring a little different edge as well uh for you guys when you look at Let's go back to the offensive line. Um, Tyler Guyton, what stands out the most about him? His size. Well, uh, outside of size, size. I'm sorry. Big, outside big of guy. size. <laughs> um, the feet. Yeah, yeah. I put footwork yeah. on here. Yeah, yeah. For, me, for me, it's the feet. Yeah. And for me, it's uh, just how he's able to get out in space mm -hmm. and um, drive the ship in that regard. Um, the way he uses his feet to recover. Mm -hmm. It's... It, when you talk about athleticism, athleticism looks different different with yeah. every position. So when you see a guy is able to mirror a defensive lineman or just get out of his kick, like that mm -hmm. initial step, like just to kick step fast enough to deal with those speed yeah. rushers and stuff like that, th that's where the athleticism shows up, the lateral movement, him moving mm -hmm. side to side and things like that. So I, I think that's what stands out the most, the most to me initially. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned the size, of course, yeah. but it's just the way that his feet, are able to keep moving mm -hmm. and also too when he anchors it's it's pretty much like the latch is, is yeah. when he's able to sit down you don't see a lot of guys getting away from mm -hmm. him once he does yeah. and so those things those are two things that stand out the most to me mm -hmm. i'm gonna say discipline okay. I, I think you know he has a he has a some polishing up to do yeah. mm -hmm. but from where he is right now as a rookie like not even having stepping foot on the practice field, I'm going to say discipline stands out to me. And and something that uh, I kind of deep dive into was at his time at OU, um, you have to understand that his O-line coach, Bill Biedenbaugh, and I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Aisha and I were we trying try to practice it. this. Uh, he, he really instills, uh, I wrote, toughness, physicality, and fundamentals. And mm -hmm. to me, if you have an offensive lineman that is focusing on his fundamentals, look, we talk about this all the time, especially when we're talking about pre-snap penalties. And yeah. I hate to bring this up again. You need a guy that is going to eliminate those. You need a guy that you don't have to worry about those with. You just need that focus, that discipline. And I think he's a guy that can come in here and give you that yeah. uh, and, and give you just kind of what you need as far as, hey, we don't even have to worry about the pre-snap penalties. He's there. He needs polishing up. But at least that's not a worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what Aisha said about, you know, once you get the hands on him and mm -hmm. controlling the... Um, he controls the boss, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think we got real spoiled with that over the years uh, with Tyron Smith. Yes. <laughs> that was his strength. Yes. I mean, the, the, you yes. hear his teammates or other people around the league Holy talk about moly. Tyron Smith, and they're like, that's a man's man. These are men's men saying yeah. this mm -hmm. of Tyron Smith. Mm -hmm. He is a man among men. Yeah. And um, we got spoiled by it. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. I just hope that Cowboys Nation gives this kid time to grow. Mm, yeah. Because when you're, when you're grace is a well, wonderful grace. word. I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that, Nicole. Because, um, you know, he's filling the shoes of a person who's mm. arguably a Hall of Fame career. Yep. Yeah. arguably a ring of honor career yep and there, there are going to be some mistakes there's mm -hmm. going to be some times he gets beat michael parsons is going to embarrass him yep. in training camp at times yeah let's have some grace let's have some patience and which is hard in the nfl but I, i'm really yeah. really excited to see uh how he you know conducts himself Develops. handles himself is disciplined yeah. i think you're right jess i agree with all of you but um yeah, if he, if he does uh, has those Tyron Smith qualities, yeah. 
which he showed in college, if he carries that to this level, mm -hmm. man, what a blessing it would be to go from a Tyron mm. to Tyler. He has the yeah. attitude. Yeah. 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 I know we're about to get into it, but he, I, I want to say like, the little bit that I've gotten to see, you've actually gotten to spend time with him mm -hmm. as well. Like yeah. I, as uh, you've gotten to spend time with him, Nicole, yeah. the way that he's so genuinely humble to mm. be here. Yeah you're going to get his best effort. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you can just, like I mentioned, you can, you can see just it. You can see, it. see mm -hmm. that this player is going to do everything that they need to do. Already working with Duke Manyweather, who's such that. an asset love to, that. he's a he's a luxury, you guys. Yeah. Like yeah. the other offensive linemen in this league don't get that one-on-one -on -one time with him mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. weekend sometimes or during the week yeah. sometimes. Like yeah. this is, so for the fact that he's already working with Duke and yeah. some of the other players on Zach, the team. And it again, yeah, it, thank Bill you. It again Dane. shows already how dedicated Continuity. he is I, th I think the kid's gonna be fine yeah. all right well, we got a game coming up beep, beep, i'm not gonna beep, tell you the name beep, of it beep. yet but we have a game coming up in the third break you're watching girls talk boys talk presented by jigsaw the preferred dating partner of the dallas cowboys we'll be right back yay at jigsaw dating we obviously want the cowboys to bring that sixth ring home but to be honest we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger that's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Mother's Day is right around the corner. Celebrate mom with a star-studded Cowboys Nation gift. Visit a pro shop near you or log on to shop.dallascowboys.com. A fanatics experience and give mom a gift like no other. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, shout out to all the mothers. Speaking of Shout mothers, I just moms. saw I just yeah. saw the tweet from uh, Cooper BB's mom posting him really? going, yeah. Oh. Posting him. She said, "Does here he comes? Oh, that's so couldn't cute. be more prouder of his next journey. Love you, bub. Go get him. Oh, oh. he look like that's a sweet. bub. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, oh, <laughs> he do, y'all. Well, if you oh. ain't seen Cooper oh, BB, he looks like. I wish we could show it. Can we show? A little, I don't know yeah, if you can see it. Up and oh. zoom in on just, Jess. You gotta like zoom in. Jess. Zoom in. Make it a little bigger, Jesse. There we go. Yeah. Hold on. There we go. Whoa, that's okay. like too full close on my side. Right. Well, anyway, he's on his way here there, for, right there. for mini camp. There you go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're too, you're too close on oh me now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, I hate close-ups. I hate them. All right, y'all. Terrible. Well, just my luck. That's gonna be the thumbnail of this video on YouTube. Probably just my so. luck. Just my I luck. I can see Jazz doing Why that. Why is it your luck? It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> because Jazzy was zooming in on me. <laughs> All right, we have a game. We have a game to play. It's you called do. Lit, Hit, or Sit. So basically, <laughs> oh my goodness. So Lit, right? You're gonna choose three names out of here. Okay. Okay. You're gonna choose if this. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Wait, patient? did we choose them at the same time? <laughs> no. So I'm going to go Aisha first. Okay. She'll choose the three names that she draws. And then out of those three, you'll decide if it's a lit. Like, oh, yeah, this dude finna ball. Like, you know, you, the confidence is there. The hit is like, you know, they hit on this pick, right, in the draft. But okay, just need a little see a little bit more, right? Sit is like, oh, I need to see a little bit more development from him. I think this is going to be a year one kind of development. But I did add... Um, a couple of names that we need to step up this year. So maybe this is a, maybe like a deciding choice of like, hmm, still need to see a little bit more from him. Okay, got it. We good it? Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Get it good. Let Casey go first. Oh, okay. Let's just switch. Let's switch it. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm choosing three. She's so, so okay. graceful of you. <laughs> wow. She's I know. so graceful. She is beauty. <laughs> She's some. grace. We need <laughs> some. Uh, <laughs> <She's> <laughs> okay. States. Sorry. Oh, oh my God. goodness. That's my So movie. the first <laughs> name I have drawn is Jalen Brooks. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to go with Hit. Oh, who else did you say? Oh, okay. Yeah. Jalen Brooks, Hit. 
Nathan Thomas, that's the uh, late round mm -hmm. uh, offensive lineman. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, sit just because, you know, mm -hmm. late round pick and the not expecting him to come in and have to be a contributor right away unless there's an injury yeah. uh, situation. But so much promise <laughs> and can use this year to really develop and learn. Mm -hmm. So um, I love the pick, though. And then um, Marshawn Nealon, who I – mentioned earlier is one of the rookies I'm most excited uh, to see and I'm going to say um, I'm kind of thinking lit but just to be safe I'm going to go hit okay I really see him uh, developing as the season wears on into a really valuable part of the uh, pass rush rotation. You, Marshawn Nealon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I like He's that. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm real man. biased about yeah, this. Yeah, I'm looking at mine like, dang. I'm like, someone want to trade one? Okay. <laughs> um, So, oh my goodness. This is so much. I got Ryan Florney. Flor, Flor, Flornoy. Flornoy. Maurice. LaFau. LaFau. And Deuce Vaughn. <sighs> okay. My lit That's hard. You got hard is going to be Maurice. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. going to be my lit because mm -hmm. I'm very excited. Uh, like we were just talking about earlier, that linebacker position really needed the depth that needed the help. Uh, I think he's kind of a guy that if he absorbs well enough, he can be a plug-and-play player this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. um, in my notes, da, 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 sorry, I know we're supposed to be oh, quick good, with this. Good. He was a 30 visits guy, so that obviously means that they saw something that they really liked on him. His football IQ stands out, and his field awareness uh, is a plus. However, it looks like sharpening his patience a little bit is going to be key in his game. Uh, <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So I, I'm going to say lit because mm -hmm. I think that is just something that is doable in that mm -hmm. part of time. It's okay. I'm going to say... you are, Yours is hard. I know. I'm sorry. It's it's lit, hit, or sit. Hit. I'm gonna say hit is my is Deuce Vaughn, only because we want to see more from Deuce. I, I think everybody is intrigued to see what Deuce Vaughn is going to do with that running back room this season. There's no guarantees in the running back room, even with Zeke back. Nobody yeah. knows who's kind of landing where. I think Deuce Vaughn has his best opportunity so far uh, to get more playing time, potentially be mm -hmm. one of the starters. So I'm going to say hit. We need to see more. Uh, and I'm interested to see kind of how that year two jump is going to look for him. And contribute on kickoff returns oh, alongside Cavante. You, know. you possibly. already know that special teams edition is going to be uh, welcomed. Ah, oh, man. And I hate saying sit because we just talked about how great this guy can be. But yeah. Ryan Flor Flornoy is going to be my sit only because we just don't know yet, mm -hmm. especially for the wide receiver room as a whole. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Big mm -hmm. question mark uh, for that wide receiver three, four yeah. position. Um, only because we don't know. And That's other than fair. that, I'm still excited to see him. And mm. uh, there's that. That was difficult. Mm. All right. So I'm going to be quick. I got Tyler Guyton. Come on, Tyler lit, Guyton. Big lit. Big lit. Okay. <laughs> Real big lit because he's right. a giant human. Bit. Um, I got Brock Hoffman. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking for him to hit. I think we're mm -hmm. looking for him to push that competition at center, regardless of whether he wins it or not against mm -hmm. Cooper Beebe. Um, I think I've echoed on this show and on the draft show as well is like having adequate, good um, depth on your offensive line is a mm -hmm. luxury in this league. And for him to even um, – the competition is going to be great, but him for him to even be, you know – reliable in a sense of if someone gets nicked up during the season or mm -hmm. something like that, knowing that you got a guy that can come in and you don't have to completely shift your playbook or second guess the things you can do because you know he's capable is a blessing. So um, Brock Hoffman, I'm looking for him to hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mozzie Smith mm. is another guy that we are desperate. Like you're in desperate need of him to take step. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like no in between. Yeah. Because that DT position is not. You got Justin Rogers from Auburn. Yeah. That they brought in, but he has to take a step mm -hmm. forward this year. So I don't even know what to say about this. I don't even know what to label it as. I just know that. Work. You need something. S sit, Work. Sit, plus. sit plus. Sit plus. <laughs> sit plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sit plus. Something. It sounds like sit a plus. subscription. I just. <laughs> You get it with your <laughs> with with your Netflix. <laughs> I just can't stress how much. Yeah. And I and I will say too, it sounds unfair. I think we'll know early. 
Yeah, I no, think we'll know where it camp yeah. because he's wrestling against Cooper BB, and if that <laughs> is a if that's looking funny, then we might you need know. to start. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it needs you to know. be addressed quickly. It can't yeah. be something that you wait on. I, I just can't help it. So really hoping he recovers. Yeah, uh, from the shoulder injury as well. He think he had shoulder surgery this off season. Comes in and is beneficial for this DT room because baby ain't no hanging. And, 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 and it's a yeah. clean slate. <laughs> yeah, clean slate um, with Zimmer and then Zanina. Mm-hmm. It's Ganina, the um. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, defensive line coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's so. retaining a lot of information. Yeah. Probably going through some changes. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah. and like I said, the mental wear and tear. Mm-hmm. Even. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I can't stress it enough. Need. How much? Yeah, a need. And because you look at the one tech hit. position, you really experience. You have Carl. Yeah, it, it, literally. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's oh, it. There you go. That's it. Nicole, who's okay. your hit list? Yeah, go go, mama. It's my time to go. And I. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I had to do it. Um, okay, so I have Sam Williams, Jalen Tober, and Kaylin Carson. Oh, you got go. Oh, oh wow. Man. I'm jealous. Yeah. Woohoo. This None was stressing me out a little bit. Um, yeah, no, none of them sitting. They ain't got a choice. No. Um, no. So I'm going to go. Dang. Lit. Dang. I'm going to go Sam Williams. Okay, okay. I'm going to go Sam Dub because. One, no more Dorrance Armstrong, no more Dante Fowler. You, you ain't got a choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. definitely lit for Sam. Uh he just has to clean up penalties. Obviously that was the issue in twenty twenty three for him. Um Can I add something really yeah, quick yeah. that I will say that I've talked to several people who have been interacting with Sam mm-hmm. as of late, been around him, trained with him, yeah. mm-hmm. and it does seem like Different. he is Maturing. stepping into that maturity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he I think he also understands the yep. moment right now. Cause mm-hmm. it, yeah, he has to. Come he on, said that, well, he did say that at the Derby, home yes. run derby too, yes. uh, when speaking with I the want media. To add that really no, quickly. Go ahead, baby. Appreciate you. So that's my lit. My s- hit. Because we just talked about how much we love Jalen Tober and how much he needs to step up this year. But I'm not gonna lie, what Al Harris does with these uh these guys. Yeah. Kaylin Carson out of the fifth round. Yeah. <laughs> Who else I, is I the think fifth round? Deron Bland. By Who is Steve. anything but yes. Bland. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna go <laughs> Kaylin Carson as my hit. Okay. Um and then I'm I don't want to say sit for Jalen Tolbert. Sit plus. Because, sit plus. Hit minus. Sit plus. Hit minus. I'm going to go hit minus uh, that's good. for Jalen Tolbert. I know that wasn't part of the game. Not but cheating. I'm gonna that's go. fine. We cheated. Not cheating. Sorry. Well, if I knew that was part. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. But no, I'm going to go Jalen Tolbert hit minus. Yeah. Um, just because, one, we're still looking for that guy, that number three guy um, at receiver. And they, whoever it is going to earn it. They, they yeah. That's the, earn that's it. the, that's the dopest yeah. part about what's happening right now in this yeah. competition, this this conversation, is that whoever is that three is going to earn it because yeah. you do have guys that can come yeah. out there and do it. And you want the best man to win. That's you yeah. want the guy that's going to so you know, you're not going to get the ball yeah. a whole bunch because, you know, yeah. number one, number two. But be prepared. Yeah. Be ready. Well, I know he was lit on the show. Oh, but it's time articles. to sit down. It's time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go. I was waiting Great for the. Idea. I was waiting for the hit one. I was like, well, where's the? No, I, yeah, I couldn't. It's time to hit the road. So hit we can the door. Sit. Ah, there you go. Okay. Uh, I see where you went. All right. We're here. Got you. We're here. Wrong, All right, ladies. Great show today. But that is a wrap for today. You're watching Girls Talk Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see y'all next Thursday. Bye. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!